Cloud Computing, DevOps, Docker, Kubernetes, Serverless. If you as a software engineer haven't come across buzzwords like these lately, then you have probably been living under a rock. But what do all these technologies seem to have in common? Virtualization. But what actually is virtualization? That is what we will learn today. Virtualization is defined as the technology that allows us to create and manage virtual resources which are isolated from the underlying hardware. Using virtualization, we can make a single computer act like multiple virtual ones. Now is that a joke? Absolutely not. It's always a good idea to learn with examples. Suppose a company named XYZ needs to run two different applications, App A and App B. And these applications are not compatible with each other for some reason. It could be that they require a set of conflicting dependencies or it could be that they do not use the same operating system. Whatever the scenario, it's, it's not very uncommon. In a world without virtualization, the company naturally gets two different physical machines for each app. Now we can note the major downsides to this approach immediately. Number one, each app is not fully utilizing the physical resources that are available. That is, it is wasting capacity. Number two, it's difficult to estimate the load of an application. You can either overestimate or underestimate. Number three, buying additional hardware for each new application is required. And number four, the security needs to be maintained for every single system individually, thus maintenance overhead. In the absence of a solution, the downsides could not be trivial. And that is why this has been the traditional way of running applications for a long time. Fortunately, however, we have a solution to this and it's called, of course, virtualization. It can allow company XYZ to run both of their applications on a single machine, saving them lots of money and headaches. With virtualization, a single physical machine can be partitioned into several smaller ones, each of which acts as if it is a completely separate machine. Therefore, the term virtual. A program running inside a virtual environment only has access to the resources assigned to that particular environment or partition. So if company XYZ was desperate, they could even have a third application running on the same machine. Although it is recommended to not run machines at full load for long periods. Let's note the major benefits of virtualization. Number one, hardware cost savings. Since we can partition a single physical machine into multiple smaller ones, we can now utilize the available hardware more efficiently by distributing the resources available like RAM, CPU storage as required. Number 2. Application Isolation Each virtual environment acts like a separate machine, therefore not interfering with an application that runs on a separate environment example by conflicting dependencies. This means we can develop and deploy the application separately. Number three, improved scalability and availability. Virtual resources are easier and faster to create, manage and tear down compared to getting new hardware. Therefore, they are more scalable and provide the means to build systems which are more available. Number four, centralized administration and security. Since the physical resources are isolated from the applications that use them, the resources can be centrally managed and security policies 
can be centrally enforced. There can be several types of virtualization. For example, hardware, operating system, network or data virtualization. However, we will only be focusing on the first two for now. In order to fully utilize virtualization and choose what works for us, we need to compare our available options. We have three main players, bare metal, virtual machines and containers. Bare metal or no virtualization is the traditional way of running an application where you run the application on dedicated hardware. That is one machine, one operating system and one program. The biggest benefit to this approach is that it can provide the best performance since there isn't a virtualization layer between the host and the application. Although it is important to note that the performance penalty of virtualization is usually tiny and insignificant for most use cases. When organizations chose an IT stack to work with, they were usually locked into that vendor specific hardware, operating system or license agreements, making it very difficult to run multiple applications on a single machine. As a result, physical resources were highly underutilized, could not be partitioned easily for different projects and were difficult to scale since buying new machines were expensive and difficult to maintain. Something had to be done. In the 1990s, virtual machines were being widely adopted, addressing the problems we had faced with bare metal. The key piece of technology that makes virtual machines work is called a hypervisor. A hypervisor is a software that imitates a particular piece of computer hardware or the entire computer allowing the available physical resources to be partitioned into multiple virtual ones called virtual machines. The computer that runs a hypervisor is called the host system and the virtual machines created and managed by the hypervisor are called guest systems. Type 1 hypervisors can sit directly on top of the hardware while type 2 sit on top of an operating system, although the distinction between the two is hard to draw sometimes. Virtual machines are great in that they solve many of the problems we had faced with bare metal, but they still have a major drawback. Each virtual machine virtualizes an entire operating system as well as its underlying hardware. This could be redundant in many use cases. So, can we do better? Enter containers. Containers virtualize just the operating system instead of virtualizing the entire physical machine like VMs. They don't need a hypervisor. Instead, all containers running on a host machine share the kernel of the host system and only contain the application and their libraries and dependencies. This makes them extremely lightweight and fast. Additionally, since containers are not concerned with the underlying hardware, they can be run on a myriad of different platforms, data centers and cloud providers, making them very flexible and portable. This is why containers form the basis of microservices cloud native applications, many DevOps practices like CICD pipelines and much, much more. But containers are not the one size fits all solution though. Containers provide a lower level of isolation compared to virtual machine. Since many containers can be run on the same host machine and they do not virtualize the hardware. This could give rise to security or compliance issues which might be an important consideration in some industries or projects. But for most use cases, this is not an issue. So, chill out. From the tragedies of bare metal, we got the virtualization revolution. 
it powers many real world applications of today and it is also what makes cloud computing possible. As with other areas in technology, virtualization continues to rapidly evolve, disrupting how businesses do business and accelerating innovation. The concept of operating system level virtualization has been around for a while, but the modern container era began with the introduction of Docker in 2013. Docker is one of my favorite technologies and we are already working to make a series of tutorials on Docker to make it as easy as possible. The first two blogs are already out. Find the links on the description below. Stay tuned and keep learning. But most importantly, take care.